This is Christopher Moldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today I'm going to do a movie review for the Black Panther movie. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 15 and 16 and a reading of my fantasy short story The Witch's Origin. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well so please leave any comments and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a detailed recap of the movie uh, Black Panther. Uh, so there will have spoilers. I'm just going to totally spoil the whole movie. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want you know, to hear the spoilers, I'm giving you fair warning right now. I'm just going to totally recap the movie. And then afterwards, I'll give my thoughts on the movie as well. So... Uh, let's recap Black Panther. So, centuries ago, five African tribes went to war over a meteorite containing vibranium, strongest metal, known metal on Earth. Um, it's supposed to be even better than adamantium um, for uh, different reasons. But a warrior ingested a heart-shaped herb that was affected by the metal and gained superhuman abilities. And he became the first Black Panther and united all the tribes except the Jabari tribe who declined to join up with them. And they formed a nation of Wakanda. Over time, the Wakandans used the vibranium to develop advanced technology and isolated themselves from the world by, posting, or by posing as a third world country. So in 92, King T'Chaka travels to Oakland, California to visit his undercover, undercover brother, Njobi, a uh, black market arms dealer, uh, U Ulysses Claw uh, had infiltrated Wakanda and stolen vibranium, and T'Chaka accuses Njobi of assisting him. So, Njobi's friend reveals himself to be Zuri, another Waka undercover Wakandan, who confirms T'Chaka's suspicions. In 2016, following T'Chaka's death at the hands of uh, Helmut Z Zemo, uh, that was, you can see that in uh, Captain America Civil War, his son T'Challa returns to Wakanda to assume the throne. He and Okoye, the leader of the Dora Malahi fighting force. Um, I'm, if I pronounce them wrong, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm really bad with names. Um, they get his uh, ex-girlfriend uh, Nakia from an undercover assignment so she can att attend his coronation ceremony along with his mother Ramonda and younger sister Shuri. At the ceremony, the Jabari tribe's leader M'Baku challenges T'Challa for the crown in ritual combat, but T'Challa wins and convinces him to surrender rather than die. So Claw and Eric Stevens uh, cooperate to steal a Wakandan artica uh, artifact from a museum. Eric Stevens played by Michael B. Jordan. T'Challa learns that Claw plans to sell the artifact in an underground casino in Busan, South Korea. So... Uh, Wakabi, T'Challa's friend, and um, Akoya's like wife lover uh, urges them to either kill Claw or return with him. So T'Challa, Akoya, and Nakia travel to the casino where T'Challa learns that CIA agent Everett K. Ross is the buyer. Um, so this big firefight breaks out. Claw escapes. Uh, and Okoye, Nakia, and Ross uh, pursue. With Shuri's help, T'Challa captures Claw, and while Ross in interrogates Claw, Claw reveals that Wakanda's international image is just a front for techno technologically advanced civilization, telling him it's pretty much El Dorado. They're ambushed by Eric Stevens, who gets Claw, um, gets Claw back. Ross is severely injured because uh, he pretty much took a bullet from Nakia and T'Challa notices Eric's wearing a ring identical to his own. So T'Challa decides to take Ross to Wakanda where their technology can save him rather than pursue Claw. Uh, while Sherry heals Ross, T'Challa confronts Zuri about what happened to Njobi, his uncle, um, or T'Challa's uncle. Zuri explains that Njobi planned to share Wakanda's technology with people of African descent around the world to help them conquer their oppressors. As T'Chaka 
prepared to imprison Njobi, and Njobi attacked Zuri, forcing T'Chaka uh, to, to kill him. Uh, but they left behind Njobi's son, Eric, uh, as returning him would complicate their life that Njobi had disappeared. Uh, Eric would eventually grow into a U.S. black ops soldier, earning the name Killmonger. Uh, so Killmonger actually kills Claw, then takes his body to Wakanda, and then Killmonger's br uh, brought before the tribal leaders, and he reveals his identity and claims the throne, uh, or tries to claim the throne. He then challenges T'Challa to ritual combat, and after killing Zuri, he defeats T'Challa and hur hurls him over a waterfall. Uh, Nakia extracts one of the heart-shaped herbs before Killmonger orders him to just burn them all. Um, so Killmonger, who's supported by uh, Wakabi and his army, prepares shipments of Wakandan weapons to be distributed to operatives around the world. Nakia, Shuri, Ramonda, and Ross uh, make their escape to J the Jabari tribe to seek their aid, which is in the mountains. Uh, where they find uh, T'Challa, and actually he's pretty much just comatose, and he's rescued by the Jabari in repayment for sparing M'Baku's life. Uh, they heal him with the herb, um, with that one um, herb that they took before it got burned down, uh, before the herbs got burned, and T'Challa requests aid from M'Baku, who declines. So... Uh, T'Challa returns to Wakanda to fight Killmonger, who commands Wakabi and his army to, to attack T'Challa. Uh, the Dori Malaji, uh, joined by Sh Shuri and Nakia, battle Killmonger. Um, and Killmonger has his own Black Panther suit. Shuri instructs Ross to remotely pilot a jet to shoot down the planes carrying the vibranium weapons. And Baku and the Jabari eventually arrive to assist T'Challa. And... When confronted by Okoye, Wakabi and his army surrender. He very much sees that, like, he very much has this, like, epiphany moment right there. We're just like, dude, we're fighting each other. What are we doing? My lover. Uh, I, I don't know if they're, like, husband and wife. So I'll just say lover. Is going to kill me <laughs> over this. And he's just looking, and it's like, you know, they're fighting each You know, you have Wakandans fighting each other. And it's just like, yeah, dude, this is done. So, finally, so T'Challa and um, Killmonger fight in Wakanda's vibranium mine. And uh, T'Challa disrupts Killmonger's suit and just stabs him. He, he, like, there, there was a weapon. T'Challa managed to get a hold of it and stabs him in a really you know, slick move. Uh, Killmonger, though, de declines an offer to be healed and imprisoned, and cho uh, instead choosing to die a free man. Uh, T'Challa establishes an outreach center at the building where Njobi died to be run by Nakia and Shuri. In the mid uh, credit scene, T'Challa appears before the UN to reveal Wakanda's true nature to the world. And in the post credit scene, Shuri continues to help Bucky Barnes with his uh, recuperation. So, uh, before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismodolog.com. And you can read a new blog post every week on there. Uh, I have a new one every Sunday. Uh, my last one that I just wrote was about like uh, going to the Long Beach Comic Expo and just how things have a way of going like full circle. Also, do you like anime? Do you like action, adventure, fantasy, different worlds, crazy, zany, quirky characters? Then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for just $4.99 via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Uh, links to buy it will be provided on the page description. So, uh, let's go into my thoughts. Usually the way I, I do my thoughts is I just talk about the characters and just some of the plot stuff and some of the bigger Marvel stuff and, and whatnot, whatever, whatever else comes across my mind. So, um, we got T'Challa, who's the Black Panther, played by Ch Bo Chadwick Boseman. Um, I think he's really good in this role. Um, 
if you were kind of to look at it in a real life sphere, Bozeman would be kind of like a Martin Luther King type character to Killmonger's uh, Malcolm X, you know, and, and it's seemingly, if you want to look at it that way, uh, you know, Martin Luther King kind of won, you know, I mean, obviously he didn't fight with like nonviolence or anything like that, he, he obviously fought the guy, but, um, you know, that's kind of how he, he seems to be represented in the movie, and it's fine, uh, I think he plays the part really well, um, he's, as far as this movie overall is concerned, I mean, he's, and you kind of saw this in, in, uh, Civil War, uh, a bit more of a serious character than more of a comical character, like, and he's not doing so many wisecracks, like Ant-Man, and, or, uh, Spider-Man, or something like that, which is fine, I, it, it fits within his character, um, you know, he goes through this, I, I mean, he does go through some level of struggle, um, obviously, he, he couldn't beat Killmonger to begin with, he's struggling to, to figure out how to be a king, um, he, he's struggling to get, you know, the, the possibility of Wakanda out there uh, to the greater world or not, or to keep this isolationist thing going on with Wakanda. So he's got a lot on his plate, and um, I think by the end, he he figures it all out and, and does find certain solutions uh, for it. Um, as far as what he's going to do in, like, the, the future... Um, I'll get that later, but yeah, that that should be really interesting. Uh, and then you have N N Jadaka, Jadaka, who's Eric Stevens slash Killmonger, played by uh, Michael B. Jordan. Um, he's a standout, easily the standout of the movie. Um, standout villain. His motivations, while aggressive, while ha potentially harmful. Um, are clear, you know, there is some level of logic to what he's talking about, um, and just as a character by himself, I mean, you know, he does not have this parallel path to, like, T'Challa, you know, he was abandoned, you know, um, his, his dad died, uh, early on, he didn't really have that, you know, he couldn't have that, like, love through, you know, from his father growing up, um, really smart guy, and, and a very capable, capable guy, though, but, you know, when he's going through the ritual of becoming, like, the Black Panther, I mean, he goes back to Oakland, Black Panther goes back to, like, the, go to the spiritual plane and sees his dad, and sees all these Panthers, you know, Killmonger just doesn't have that, his history, really, with his father, is just, some apartment building, you know, um, so, in a sense, it, it's very clear that, you know, obviously, Killmonger le has led a m much more difficult life, he's not living in par the paradise of Wakanda, obviously, he's living in the streets of Oakland, um, and, you know, and he just kind of grew up this way, you know, to be, uh, this person, um, I kind of, you know, it's a weird thing w with the end. I think it was, it's more impactful that, it, you know, Killmonger chose death instead of life, uh, you know, to die a free man instead of being in prison. That the fact of the matter is, I, I, I you know, it, you know, it, it, Movies will make you think, well, what if they went a different route in a sense, you know? Like, story can do this a lot, you know? It's like, well, what if they went a different route? Well, what if it's like, hey, Black Panther's like, no, nah, bro, I'll, I'll, no, bro, we'll, we'll just be like brothers, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you know, would he still refuse? <laughs> like, I, I, it, that was one of the things that, that I was kind of wondering, you know? It's like, something like that. Obviously, that, that didn't happen in the movie, but, um... It, you know, he, he's definitely 
more uh, of a tragic villain. He, he has good motivation for what he's doing. And uh, it, in that sense, he definitely is one of the stronger villains out there. Uh, then we also see Nakia, Lupita, and I can't pronounce her last name. I'll just say Lupita uh, Nyong'o, uh, who's T'Challa's uh, former lover and a war dog, uh, who's also an undercover spy for Wakanda. Um, you know, Nakia would be something of like, I would say she's something of like the bridge in a, in a sense. You know, because she's out there. She's doing the spy work. She's she's seeing how, you know, others are, are suffering and, and whatnot. She's not in Wakanda. You know, she hasn't been in Wakanda for a long time. You know, she she's she stepped out of, you know, like, par- you know, paradise of Wakanda and saw, like, what the world was. And the world's not Wakanda. So, you know, but she's still really strong. She wants to do something. Uh to help others outside of Wakanda and whatnot. So, um, you know, it, it added, the thing is, like, there wasn't much, like, it, the love story was, was pretty weak, honestly. I mean, at, at the end, it seems like she's going to stay with T'Challa, I think. Um, but, Although, yeah, you know, so as far as the love story goes, it's really not there. It's really not too existent. Uh, but as a character, you know, um, she's one of many women that are really strong, really capable, um, and are, are fighters. And speaking of fighters, you have uh, Okoye, who's an extremely proud Wakandan, who's the head of the Dora Milaje. Uh, which is the all-female forces of Wakanda, and he serves a, she serves as T'Challa's bodyguards. Um, you know, she's painfully <laughs> uh, loyal to Wakanda. I mean, it's, it's really, it shows because she, she wouldn't go with T'Challa, um, or she wouldn't flee, you know, when Killmonger became the king obviously, but she did end up fighting against, uh, Killmonger, and, uh, fought against her lover at at the very end, and was willing to kill him for Wakanda, um, yeah, as far as capability of fighting, I mean, she's top notch, I mean, she she was just there with her spear, and, and whatnot, she's, um, super serious, you know, like, particularly serious, um, and I, I, I'm actually a bit curious to see if some of these characters are actually going to be in, in the Infinity War. Uh, we also introduced the Everett Ross, who's kind of like this pushover guy, you know, he's a CIA agent, um, he, but like, he, he kind of acts like this pushover, but he obviously has some bravery. You know, has some. He's obviously a very brave uh, person that that just wants to help. You know, obviously he, you know, he flies a plane. He's getting attacked. The 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 sh- the the glass that's gonna, you know, that's blocking him from this this uh was it, it wasn't a helicopter. It was like this. All the flying vehicle that's shooting at him is about to break, but he still wants to, you know, like shoot down the planes for the, you know, that carry the vibranium, you know, um, willing more or less to risk his own life, um, and, and really it is just kind of on like, seems more of the straight and narrow guy, and, and like I said, something of a pushover character, but like was in the end pretty helpful. Uh, you know, he's a CIA agent. I, I, I was like, is he a part of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Like, I, I, for some reason, like, that wasn't mentioned. Or is he just CIA? I, I kind of wonder about that, actually. Uh, that was the first thing that came to my head. Uh, we also introduced to Shuri, who's T'Challa's 16-year-old sister and the Princess of Wakanda. Um, you know, she kind of shows that girls are into STEM, <laughs> like, pretty much. Um... You know, she seems to 
I have a, a fondness for her brother, obviously. Um, and she's definitely, I mean, like, she, she's her age, you know? She's 16. She's a bit immature. She's the one that's just like, oh, after the whole, th you know, like, ritual combat thing, or, like, or coronation ceremony, it really is just like, hey, can we get on with this now? You know, like, she's kind of hustling, bustling, um, super smart, uh, helpful, uh, to, to Chala and whatnot, and, um, you know, re really kind of just, like, like most characters just came through for T'Challa as well. Uh, we also saw, like, M'Baku, who's a pa the warrior from, um, the, the king of, um, the Jabari tribe, or the leader of the Jabari tribe. Um, what can you say? I mean, dude, the guy got secluded to the mountains. I mean, yeah, of course, he's going to have, like, uh, bitterness to, you know, like, the main Wakandan tribes and whatnot. And it is against T'Challa being the new king. But, you know, obviously he has an aspect of respect, um, an aspect of honor about him. And, you know, like, it's like, oh, you didn't kill me. I'm going to save your life. Like, debts have to be paid. He's, you know, in a sense, kind of like the big softy. <laughs> if you really think about it, he kind of is like the big softy, uh, in a sense. I also got introduced to, like, Ramonda, T'Challa's mother, who's the queen of Wakanda. Uh, she can fight, you know, she has these, um, are these chakras? I think they're chakras, like, these round rings that she can fight with. Um, once again, showing that, you know, most of the women of Wakanda are very capable fighters in their own right. Zuri, Forrest Whitaker, you, got, you know, it's got to be said, you know, he's this elder statesman in Wakanda and the keeper of the heart-shaped herbs. And, um... He's kind of playing like the, he, he kind of played the same guy from Rogue One, you know, this like, oh, you know, older, mystic type guy, you know, priestly type guy. I, I wonder if this is kind of like the roles he's kind of stuck in at this point. Uh, another st standout uh, that I thought, Ulysses Claw, man, this guy is just... Um, I mean, he had a piece of advanced Wakanda mining equipment as a sonic disruptor arm cannon. Um, he was, he was really good. I mean, he, um, I forgot who played him, but he did a really good job of just this crazy dude, you know? I mean, it's just like, he's tied to a chair. He has, he has one last, arm, he doesn't have his arm cannon no more. Wall blows up, and this guy's just cracking jokes and just saying stuff. You know, bullets are flying, and he's just, like, he's having fun, like, with with it all, you know? Like, his life is about to be, about to end, and this guy's just laughing it up. So, um, yeah, I, I really liked his character. Um, I'm going to say, I, I thought Killmonger was... Definitely the standout character of here, but I, I really did like uh, Claw and how he was presented as just crazy. You know, another character, and it's not really a character in a sense of like an actual person, but um, Wakanda itself was obviously a character. You know, it, it definitely had like an Eden like, paradise like thing. You know, they're flying. To Wakanda, it's all green, and then you see that technological like city inside and whatnot. And you know, T'Challa's just like, Yeah, this never gets old, you know. And it's like, Yeah, it's, it's paradise. I mean, you got you got the meter that fell in there, you know, that made you know, like that, and, and this metal that can just do anything can help spinal injuries that, that can, um, strongest metal on earth, it, it can make, te you know, this, like, technologically advanced stuff, um, it, it's gotta be said, though, like, uh, you know, they, they have spies, right, apparently they're sending spies out into, into the world, this is never actually answered, but why did the king send his brother out to Oakland, I, it's like, 
nothing against Oakland, but it's like, what's there? Why didn't you want to send it, the spy to like, I don't know, Washington or, or, or something? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm a bit confused there. I mean, I, I it, it's, I, I. I can, I mean, I understand it. They wanted to show like the, like a low income, uh, income area and whatnot and cut to kind of like personify like more of the struggle that like, you know, Killmonger would have to go through and whatnot. But like, you know, if you actually think about it logically, it's like, well, what, what is the point of doing that? But yeah, you know, this should be really interesting because, you know, Wakanda was like isolationist. And now they're out into the world. Um, as technology is such a big thing in in the Marvel, uh, in you know, the Marvel universe, you have like Hank Pym making his own technology. You have the alien technology that was used as weapons in uh, Spider-Man. You have obviously Stark. He has his own technology as well. Um, seemingly, from from what I from what I read, I think Wakandan's technology may, it, you know. It's pretty much a tank to, like, Tony Stark's pistol, pretty much. Um, you know, we're not seeing, you know, we're not seeing that, you know, like, um, Stark Tower's pretty cool looking, you know, and the Avengers, like, headquarters right now is really cool looking, but nothing looks like Wakanda, you know, um, but... Yeah, you know, they, they got the vibranium. Uh, they're able to use it. Obviously, it's not just a metal to protect yourself or, or to make weapons. I mean, man, they were able to do a lot with it. Uh, obviously, I mean, th this is quite the metal. Um, they had the, the after credits uh, showed the Winter Soldier there uh, with no arm. So it should be interesting with Bucky. Uh, my guess is that they're going to make a, a, a vibranium arm. Uh, that's my guess. Um, as far as what it does for the larger cinematic universe, though, you know, I mean, obviously, Black Panther is going to be in the Infinity Wars. So is the Winter Soldier. Um, it looks like from the, from the previews, uh, a lot of these, like the Wakandans might actually be fighting um, in the Infinity Wars, so, um, I, I'm very curious to see Black Panther's role in the Infinity Wars, I mean, like I said, I know the Wakandans seem to be in battle with whoever Thanos or whoever gets in, in uh, um, his army, um, that he gets to, to Earth or whatnot, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm just really curious, uh, I'm, I'm curious what most of these characters are going to do, uh, as far as the, the Infinity Wars go, I, I, I don't really know, is he, is he gonna have a one, you know, is he gonna, are they gonna all join together and fight Thanos, are they gonna have some sub-villains in here, um, is that who, like, Black Panther's gonna fight? Like, I, I, I'm a bit curious, and, you know, and also, as far as the larger MCU, um, you know, most, most of these movies are gonna have sequels. Um, I am very curious to see who, like, the next villain would be, um, as far as Black Panther goes. Now that the world knows about Wakanda, that should play, play a factor into, like, the next Black Panther. Uh, one other thing that actually stood out to me also is, you know, I, I, I admittedly I haven't read Black Panther, like the comic, but um, one thing I, I usually do cause I, is that if I don't know enough about a superhero, I'll at least go to the, um, like, just Wikipedia, you know, and just... Get, get a little background on, on, on these characters. So, obviously, I did that with uh, Black Panther. I know that he eventually goes to Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> um, but another thing that's really interesting is, like, he marries Storm, actually. And that would actually work. Now that Marvel bought, like, some of the rights, or rights, like, 20th 
20th Century Fox. I believe they have X. Uh, they have X Men now. So I'm actually a bit curious to see if they are indeed gonna go with something with the Black Panther, uh, with Black Panther and Storm going on. Um, it's not outside the realm of possibility. I mean, we can eventually see an Avengers versus um, X Men, you know, in the future, and they can meet there, you know, like now that that. That road is very much possible. Uh, so, yeah. You know, as far as the movie, I didn't give this letter grade. Um, I feel it's worth watching in theaters. I, I will give it, give it an A, actually. I, I thought it was just a good movie. You know, um, things moved. You know, like, uh, there isn't a lot of just talking or, or anything like that. There, there's a lot of... Things just kept moving along really well, and by the time it reached the end, it's like, oh wow, like we're we're here, you know. Um, so that was really good. I like all the characters. Like I said, Michael B. Jordan was a standout. I like Claw, but I like all the characters. I think they played them all well. Uh, I like the world that they they um inhabited, you know, Wakanda and whatnot, and, and just the different characters, rituals and and whatnot. One thing I like about Marvel movies is that every Marvel or Pretty much, yeah, pretty much every Marvel movie has its own, like, character in itself, you know? Like, Ant-Man's a heist movie. Um, Captain America is more like the spy thriller movie. Um, Thor is the fantasy one. But, you know, in the third one, obviously, they got more into, like, comedy, sci-fi, fantasy, and whatnot. This one is... I don't know if there's a specific genre to it, per se. Um, it, it had a little, bit, you know, it, it's not a one specific genre, um, for sure. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, it definitely had its political messages in there. So, like, so in that sense, um. I had a lot of political messages in there. So, I, I would say it's, like, the one with, like... I wouldn't say it's the political one, per se, but um, I thought that was a big aspect of the movie as well. I just... I can't pin a for, a particular genre for it. But, like I said, um, real good movie. Um, and would definitely recommend it uh, to, to watch it in the theaters. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Uh, thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I will have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 15 and 16 and a reading of my short story, The Witch's Origin. Thank you, and until next time.